Hello, hello, Day Drinking with David. We are back after a short hiatus. You may have caught my colleague Andrew talking about uh, the new Death & Co. cocktails last uh, week or the week before that, I guess it was. Anyway, uh, the Thanksgiving rush is <clears throat> over and we are quickly rushing toward the Christmas push, but I'm gonna try and hang out as long as I can till uh, they'll need me in the store. Oh, lightning bolts from Kalina. So today, I've, well, there's just so much stuff finally arriving, although not as much as we need, of course. Um, you know, all those B, you know, those B tacks haven't landed yet, guys. Don't don't get too crazy about that. My uh, Buffalo Trace barrels are finally bottled. So eight to twelve weeks. That was of, as of a week ago. So January twenty twenty two for that. Uh, we're planning our first Kentucky trip. If you know Omicron doesn't destroy the world, we'll be in Kentucky in April, and that's going to include a lot of fun stuff. Um, and yeah, that's sort of, that's sort of what's going on. Released a bunch of new single malts from our friends at Thompson Bros, Doorknock Distillery, Redacted, um, <laughs> Whiskey Badger digs that Frey Ranch pick, which I think is sold out. Uh, surprise, took a longer than I expected, honestly. I thought there was, uh, gonna be some, uh, real, real hype around that, but, uh, you know, I didn't have to do much work with it, but, um... It's a pretty good pick, I, I thought. Uh, I got this from uh, our friend Ivan. Uh, this is the bomb. Get yourself some Benton ham if you can. A little bit of the bacony too. Doing that for Thanksgiving. And that gave me the idea, that beautiful smokiness, to do a little bit of a mezcal push. We haven't looked at these yet. The Resperal, they're spectacularly good. And I've done absolutely nothing with them, so we're gonna talk about that. And we're gonna do some rums. I think we'll do maybe the mezcal first and the new um, Hamden. And then I got a little sample of the Ben Riak Smoke Season, which has just come in. I had some pretty unfortunate news. This seems to be happening more. I don't know what's going on, if it's just the trucking situation is a disaster. But um, our Ben Riak cast that we selected several months ago, I'm sure they don't want me to tell you this, guys. But it was it was lost. It was lost or stolen or something like that. It's insane. Um, so that's nuts. Uh, and I just heard you know some one of our rum, small rum suppliers lost twenty cases of a super rare Fijian rum, which is crazy. Like the, this is stuff that maybe had happened once or twice in a decade and a half of of selling booze, and then suddenly here we go. It's all here. Um, so. That's a bummer, but uh, we're able to, uh, you know, still find some decent products despite the shipping crisis, the impending doom that we're all facing, and uh, so we'll continue to drink. Um, are there any Buffalo Trace picks you guys have coming? Money just, uh, you just missed that update. Uh, there may be more, so this is a complicated question. There may be more of the NorCal picks, Coming, I'm not sure about the timeline of those. Those were those were distillery picks, so they take less time to process. That's why you saw the Buffalo Trace arrive, as well as I don't know. Did they have an Eagle Rare up there as well that sell very quickly? Our cast, the, the cast that I selected, that I think we tasted here, maybe um, those are just been bottled, so eight to twelve weeks they say. Uh, so we do have the two Ben Riak casks coming from Hart Brothers, which will be here in May. So those won't be gone. There is plenty of Ben React to be had, and the new Smoke Season, which is their smoky uh, version in bourbon and virgin oak, is available now, of course. Um, but the casks that we selected, uh, yeah, are lost. Are They're lost. Um, so you don't know if they're stolen or lost or gone or shipped to the wrong place or what. What We don't know. They have any information. They just don't have them anymore. So, wow. So that's pretty unusual, especially for a company like Brown Foreman, who's usually pretty on the ball, so I have a feeling it's not a mistake by anybody over there. Tater's got a Tate, thank you for that. Ben React, Ben React, Ben React. We got a lot of questions coming at me. Here we go, eight to 12 weeks away, January. Thank you, Four Delays of Winterbrand. No info, Chuck, sorry. Any more Cinco since Tito's Mixteca coming? Mateo, I just ordered, they haven't opened them for me, so it's very hard for us to order without tasting them because they're so unusual. Um, but we've just ordered the Azul Tobon 
and mm, one other one, the El, uh, they call it Al Horno. I, I didn't have any details on those, so that's exciting. Uh, expect those, and I bought the Martinez Tobola, which is, you know, one of my favorite producers. I love Alberto Martinez. I've been to the Palenque. I am totally in love. Um, so I was talking about the other Stag Junior Full Proof. Yeah, that's the stuff I, I, I mentioned a, a while back. That's the stuff I picked. It's to 8 to 12 weeks. Any MGP Toasted Barrel Picks coming? Nulu Toasted? No. They sent us the small batch without telling us, which is apparently very nice. It's a blend of two or three barrels. Um, there's a little bit more of the single barrels, but it's a little complicated. Now I have 30, 30 cases of the small batch and they didn't, they shipped it without telling me. It's all very weird. Uh, no, Hazmat Jack Daniels. We're not a great Jack account. We wish we could sell more Jack. We can't even sell it at the discounted price. I don't know. It's not just, it's just not for our customers. So that translates into, um, very small allocations for the rare Jack stuff. I'll buy barrel proof all day long, but, uh, you know, it just doesn't make a, a, a a bit of a difference to them. Um, so yeah, I think we got just a handful of the 10 year and the Koi Hill is even less. So don't expect much of that from us. There is more Ferrand. Oh my God, yes, yes. There should be more coming tomorrow, 12 bottles. So good luck. Uh, that's so many questions, hazmat, hazmat. Um, do you want me to taste some stuff guys or should we just keep talking about stinking bourbon? Uh, I feel like this gets asked all the time. Do you have a rec for a good price conscious Armagnac to try for bourbon drinkers who wants to try some? Just try whatever, man. They're all really good, you know? I, just, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, go for the, you know, if you want sweet, sweet and soft, go for the Mary Defoe or Dodge. They're good values. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're a good entry into the category. There are none of, none of our exclusives available right now. I'd always recommend like, a big, bold, oaky cardenat or something like that. Um, but everything's just taken forever to get here. So all the stuff we've ordered is, you know, that was supposed to be here for the holidays is probably not gonna be here till February. So we're gonna have a fun he February, I'll tell you what. Uh, any hint on the redacted 30 year space side? No, no, there there have been no hit, there hints. Uh, he had no information for me. It's a pretty rich style. Uh, they've been gotten great reviews. Uh, yes. Uh, UHF fan, Blue Run, Bourbon is coming. Crazy Nas stole our barrels? Well, good for Nas, yeah, good for Nas. Good for him, okay, cool. Um, more Wild Turkey, Master Keep one. We got like three bottles allocated in NorCal. Waiting for the new allocations, who knows? You know, we used to get tons of Master Keep, now it's all, you know, everything's pappy. Everything's coming up pappy. That's all, it's all allocated, all allocated, allocated, allocated. I don't know how much more wild, I could push wild turkey than I already do, but uh, we're trying our best. Running low on one, two, three, tequila three. Yes, they have changed distributors and they, uh, the Añejo is not available. So yes, though, that will be some time. And the price is like doubling next year when, when they switch distributors, so that's fun. Don't, uh, sorry when you said don't expect much, does that mean there will be some? Yes, it may be. I don't know. Uh, Chateau Lucky is a great choice. Good, good choice. Although um, not as oaky as some of the bourbon guys like it. That DeRose 20 is really good if you can go up to 100. Uh, that's that's a go-to for us, one of our very, very favorites. Um, we do have a Cardinot on order. We're back to Armagnacs, talking Armagnac now. So much, so much action here, guys. Look at all these. Uh, I did select last week's winners, so they've been notified. I'm so sorry if you didn't get picked. It was very, very uh, busy. David lives upstairs at the Kale. <laughs> oh God, I'm glad I don't live in Hollywood anymore. It's just so intense over there. Uh, thanks for the recommendations. Anytime, I think you'll find uh, something you love in there and, and keep an eye out because there are some great stuff coming. So uh, yeah, that 98 Cardinat was good. Cardinat is totally underrated, underpriced too. So we're gonna try to taste some mescalis. This is from the wonderful Berta Vasquez in San Baltazar, Chichicapam. Gorgeous labels for this series. I thought I was really glad that they went back with some of these uh, more artistic labels. Um, there's, I assume that's, you know, Berta there uh, and voila. But uh, this was a blend of three agave types, Mexicano, Espadín and Tepestate, um, grown between 
nine, which I'm sure is the Espadín, and 25 years, which is likely the Tepestate. Um, the classic, very traditional distillation here, horse-drawn Tahona, five years conical earth oven. Um, you know, the one interesting thing that Resparal has done this year is they've upped their post uh, profit share to 30%, which is a huge part of any business. You know, the, 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 their, the, their profits are going back into the villages and distillers. Alex White, who started this brand, is a really interesting guy. You, you, you know, he's got a nursery outside of Oaxaca City and um, is just planting and planting and planting and planting agave for his producers and just giving back. The guy is uh, really, really interesting and really, really thoughtful um, bottler. Uh, apparently people like him, so do I. Um, and let's see, do, 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 do. we missed you, I missed you too. Cardinal, did I miss any, any, uh, any questions? So this is, um, this is a 110 liter batch with only the heads and tails used for adjustment, double distilled, eight days fermented in Cyprus vats from the legendary Ma Maestro Mescalera, Berta Vasquez. This is one that off the, when I first opened the bottle, like was really funky, almost cheesy, which is very un berta -y. But now with some air, we're getting much, much more fruit. There is a little bit of that tepestate greenness. This has not been, this is a fresh, fresh batch. Um, this has not been rested for a long time. The series sixes were Are we back to problems with the audio? I got an, an, an alert here. Um, let's pray we're not back in that situation. Thought I'd fix it. Let me know if you can't hear me. Anyway, um, yay, that's good news. Uh, let's see. Someone just asked a question. David, appreciate that recommend on the coach last weekend. That is a killer value. Opened up last night. Surprise how much mezcal clung to the mouth. Yeah, for the qual for the price, it's got a lot going on. It won't last forever. David is in store Fridays and Saturdays. Come on, man. You're blowing my spot up. Uh, <laughs> I'm here Wednesday through Sunday. Cheers. Oh, who is that? Okay, great. Yes, yes. Come on down, Will. Yeah, come see us. We're, I'm there. I'm there every day. Uh, Thursday, uh, well, on the holidays, I'll be there most most days. I'm there Thursday, Friday, Saturday these days. Well, not this Thursday. Hmm. Anyway, um, so crazy fruit character now. There is that green mineral te tepestate thing that almost, it's not jalapeno per se. It's like, it's more subtle. Like I wanna say it's like a serrano or something, habanero, that really beautiful chili aromatic on the nose some funky banana stuff. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. On the palate, that great blend between the fruit of the espadine, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of banana, a little bit of mm, savory mesquite and smoke. Great texture, super approachable after some air. At first it was quite funky, um, so heads up on that. These are so, such good mezcals that are curated by Alex and then furthermore by us. So we selected these entire batches for the store. The second one is a new producer for Alex. This is um, a really, really interesting uh, husband and wife team, Alejandrina and Nicolas Hernandez. They're in the Rio Seco region of Zoquitlan. It's a small um, community uh, 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 to the Oh, I think it's south of south southwest of um, of the town of Zoki. Um, this is mechanically shredded, so a little bit different. Um, they're using uh, bilia, which is the local name for tovala, um, quiche, so Karwinski, tepestate, mamarata, and espadine between seven and 20 years old. I know the labels are gorgeous, but the mezcals are even better. Um, I really, really dig these, these, th this current batch and all of the batch sixes have the similar style label. Um, this is a, a, a 243 bat liter batch 
uh, double distilled in copper alambic. It says with cactus wood. I don't know what that means exactly. I guess no donkeys here. This is yeah. This is real modern stuff uh, using a mechanical press. You know, I used to be a bit of a purist and insist on oh Tohono press, and I, I I've even backed away from those sorts of things in in. Um, in tequila production, um, I don't think you necessarily need a Tohona or any particular method to make good, authentic mezcal. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a lot more work. And uh, sometimes you want the supplier, you know, the producers to do the work in the fields and necess you know, necessarily dealing with a Tohona and, and the results of that are, you know, can be beneficial. But if the mezcal is good, you know, who really cares? In tequila, it's a little more complicated because there's so much modernization, you know, that uh, that using the Tohona usually implies that they're going to do all the other stuff right, um, but not necessarily. So I've had a couple of these new fangled Tohonas where they're sort of uh, coming out of the you know of the woodworks suddenly with a Tohona expression. You're like, okay, you built a Tohona. I appreciate that that you guys are trying that, but then the flavor of the tequila, you know, tastes like every other industrial tequila out on the market and you're sort of like, well, what's the point if you're just making flavorless or low flavor tequila and putting it through Tohona, I'll just buy your cheaper stuff that tastes exactly the same without the Tohona. So it's not the crucial factor in terms of quality um, or even flavor, really. Uh, it depends on what you do with the Tohona and how long, you know, how, you know, how you're you, you using the bagasse and how long your fermentations are, all these other things. Oh, you noticed no hat today. Yeah, I, I, the hair's getting a little wild. I got, I, got, I got the kill notice from the big boss yesterday. They told me to cut my hair. So, um, you know, just gonna appreciate, you know, appreciate it as, as long as I can. Ancestral and artisanal are super romantic regardless of the support of the local mezcalers. Yeah, I mean, I think we all can agree. I mean, at least all the people that I know who love mezcal can agree that in, in a general sense, the DO system there is completely broken. Um, Tohona post diffuser, yeah, there you go. Uh, and and so the idea of ancestral and artisanal, you know, are important, I think, um, because there is tradition that's important. Ultimately, what we want is authentic stuff. You know, I don't want a, a, a village that's been using a roller mill for the last seven, six, 60 years or 50 years to, to have to put a Tohona up because they, um, uh, because they, you know, because they want to put the word artisanal on their, on their label. And I, I think it's pretty silly. So, um, that's why a lot of the great producers have moved away from using even the, the mezcal moniker. Um, I like the hair long. Come on guys. Uh, the beard had to go for Thanksgiving, you know, it's one of those things. Um, and they should not be telling you to cut your hair. Oh, I was talking about my wife, not my boss. Anyway, um, uh, so in any in any case, um, this is really good stuff. Um, this has wonderful perfume. It definitely has some of that super, um, like ultra overripe fruit weird, wonderful, floral <laughs> character, almost like, uh, kind of like honeysuckles and hydrangeas, big citrus note and some white pepper. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, mm. That's a little less pungent on the palate. It's a little less smoky. It's got some great, uh, some great texture, like a little oiliness to it. Um, yeah, we're tasting the. Oh, where does it go? This is the mezcal from Alejandra and Alejandrina and Nicolas Hernandez from Rio Seco. That's a Res Peral Series Six bottling that was done exclusively for KNL. Mmm. Um, mmm. 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 Wow, it's spicy, it's rich on the palate. Lightly smoky, not super smoky, even though today's today's session is brought to you by 
the wonderful Benton Hams of Tennessee, Tennessee's finest product, you know, besides whiskey. Uh, look at those, look at that. This is the real deal. Ivan, I owe you big time for this one. That stuff's serious. Anyway, uh, onward, upward. This is my favorite of the three, actually, from a wonderful producer, Simeon Ramirez in San Agustin Amatango. Ama, Ama uh, the varietal is San Martinero. Um, this is uh, kind of a interesting product. The, the, the village is near Ejutla. Um, San Martinero is uh, in, um, <laughs> oh, they're not actually the sponsors. I just uh, got some in the mail and I'm really excited. So uh, anyway, uh, Benton Ham is, is not the actual sponsor of this, of this, <laughs> of this program. I do apologize for the confusion there. Um, I, if they'd like to be my sponsor, I'd happily accept it and eat their ham on the camera um, if they want me to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to save it for Christmas Eve dinner. Um, anyway, uh, so this is this is an interesting product. San Martinero in, in the Santa Catarina Minas area is synonymous with Barril, which is a uh, Karwinski. But um, this product is not that. This is a different agave type, and now I'm suddenly blanking on the name, uh, which I, th I want to say it's like Mamarata or, okay, what is it? What, does anybody remember? San Martinero in Ejutla. Ejutla is, is, not too, is not too far south. I mean, it's, it's definitely southern. Where did it go? Here we go. I've got it here. Uh, 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 um. So it does use a single distillation here, which is really typical of the area. Um, you see that in Miahuatlan, in Ijutla, in the south there. Oh, someone plugging Benton's. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and eight days, three days in conical oven over oak, which is unique. Um, milled with, by hand with machete and then crushed further with mechanical mills. Uh, single distilled in copper refrescadera. So that's the, the, the single pot still with a kind of a mini column on top. They have a, 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 a water basin, which adds an, another element of um, uh, rectification, pushing back the, uh, pushing back the, um, uh, what's it called? The, the spirit de down into the, into the still to be distilled again. Uh, and I am, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what type of, um, uh, maybe it is a Karwinski here. That's interesting. Anyway, that's very complicated. The naming of mezcal agaves in general is just so unusual and complicated. So it's, you know, you're, you've got scientific names, you've got the local names, not, they don't always agree with each other. Um, and voila. Anyway, so this is unusual, single distilled in that sense. Also extremely high alcohol, 55% alcohol. This was adjusted with water, which is also unusual for this produce, you know, for, for Resperol. Um, but you know, it's still 55%. So maybe they distilled up to 56 or 57 through a little bit of uh, <laughs> through a little bit of uh, of spring water in there, and the result is this just ultra pungent. Oh my God, agave driven is that beautiful blend of citrus, mineral, floral, fruit, not as rustic or rancio as the, uh, as the uh, um, Rio Seco is, much fresher, so bright. Mm, you don't feel that high alcohol at all on the palate, which makes it extremely dangerous but also very, very delicious. Um, so yeah, heads up on this stuff. This is the one to grab, I think, of the three, if you're gonna choose one. Just so crushable and unique and delicious. Um, so, that was pretty good. 
Now I'm gonna do some rum, what do you think? Uh, I have a sample of the new edition. This is the best product that nobody is buying. The Hamden, you can't see that, it's terrible. Let me change the light. Now you can see it. Uh, Hamden Great House. This is the 2021, we still have the 2020 in stock, which is, I mean, one of the best $100 you can spend in the store. Makes no sense why we haven't sold that. It should be one of these that like people, you know, rum geeks go nuts for Foursquare and these limited releases, blah, 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 blah. This is just as good, just as rare, just as collectible, and at least just as delicious. So this is the new Great House. I, for some reason, wasn't able to find the actual details. I have them here. I don't know what the actual blend is. Um, you know, Hamden being unique in the sense that they make a number of different marks from the low to the super high ester. Um, I, I'm trying to figure it out before I got here, but I left my little sheet at the store. Uh, let me see if maybe it's in here. Mm, 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 nope, not, did not make it with me home. Anyway, um, I can't believe we have the old one. This is all distilled at the Hamden Estate from a state grown it's not in stock. It'll be here in the coming weeks. Um, the 2021, the 2020, which I've tasted here as well, is in stock. And I highly recommend it. Are there many Blue Weber Agave Mezcals on the market? I saw Cinco Cintillos has a few. There are not too many Blue Weber Mezcals on the market because it's so prized in tequila. Um, doesn't make a huge amount of sense for them to, to use it even though you're not supposed to sell Blue Weber that's grown in Oaxaca um, to Jalisco. I think that happens, apparently, according to some sources. Um, so in any case, they are quite rare. There are some, there are some uh, Tequiliana varietals uh, that, that are out there from, from various producers um, and some other, you know, other similar plants that are more available. What are your thoughts on Pachuga Mezcal? I love it, Film Sushi. Great, uh, great thing to bring up. We do have, if you're interested in Pachuga, a Pachuga tasting kit right now, which is going to be my gift uh, to every Mezcal lover this summer. I'm sorry, this winter. Um, and uh, I couldn't recommend it more. Of course, you know, these are the ceremonial spirits, the, the winter, the winter uh, harvest season spirit of, of Oaxaca and, and, but each village and region does its own thing and they do really, really exciting things. It's an interesting way to add new and unusual flavors to your mezcal. So highly recommend Pachuca. They can be very expensive. They don't have to be. There's a wonderful Borrego, which uh, we have from, I believe there's a little bit left from Malbien, the black tape from Sonido, which is exquisite where they're actually making a lamb consomme and adding that to the distillation, which is very, very unique and wonderful. Um, so anyway, we have the Great House 2020 in stock right now. This is the 2021. It's exquisite. I mean, uh, just from down here, like there's so much power and aromatic potential there. It's outrageous. Um, it's quite light in color compared to last ones, which I think was a bit darker. You know, I haven't tried the Stellan Black. Thank you for asking about that. Well, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is exactly. So we'll be having, we'll be getting that this week or next. Um, maybe there's some in stock already up north. Uh, I'm not sure. So crazy fruit, pineapple, so much pineapple, mango. Mmm, like there is some like crushed rock and Wow, this stuff is wild. Mm, oh my God, so spicy. It goes cinnamon. Like it's a freaking, it's like a cocktail almost in your, you know, it's like, a, it's like a tiki drink in your glass. It's nuts. It's sweet, it's savory, it's salty. It's, it's got such vibrancy. God, these, they're so, so good. Um, these are so drinkable. You know, this is one of these high ester rums that I think has sort of pushed over the edge to the point where you can even appreciate it if you don't like that rum funk. 
how do you get the great house releases compared to that 12 year Hamden Golden Devil? So, so different, you know, this is all, this is all matured in, 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 in the tropics in, in Jamaica. Um, so just so much more maturity at this age range. I assume these are, you know, these are not old rums, eight ish. Again, I don't have tons of information on this, but, um, so you're gonna get much more development of those esters. So softening of the short change that esters into those long, more tr tropical. So less of the crazy smoke flavors and the funk and the mineral and that stuff and more of that tropical fruit, which I think is what really makes these appealing to people. Um, and that perceived sweetness again here, which um, at the higher proof continentally aged Hamden's are, are really not super sweet. Um, do you do whiskey dinners where you feature some of the favorite paired with food? I'm not a huge fan of whiskey pairings. Um, personally, I know that's something that some people really like to do. I think you can do it if it's done very, very carefully. Um, but I, uh, you know, you have to like work with the chef. I, I much prefer to do uh, mezcal uh, pairings personally. I think it goes better with food. I, I prefer my whiskey before or after dinner um, or in a cocktail, which can do that. Um, but we do do many whiskey dinners, nonetheless, which are paired, uh, of course, um, you know, we've had several, you know, Dalmore is really good about that when they do a dinner, they like get with the chef and the chef tastes the whiskeys while they're creating the dishes. Like those types of dinners I, I'm into when there's that thoughtfulness behind it. But in a general sense, unless you've done that leg work, I don't think most whiskeys enhance food and vice versa in the same way that wine, mezcal, beer, and some of these other things would. Um, uh, Mick Choster is asking about redacted 30 year, no idea what distillery the, dis the bottler gave me absolutely no indication. It is a very rich waxy character. So it's not one of these super light ones. Suntory dinner was great. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Those were right there. Um, extremely well put together. Although I think we ended up eating first and then tr tasting after, um, the current 19 year, Diamond H is probably a little more comparable to that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, very, very, yeah, very off the um, the tropical stuff, much more pungent and intense. Uh, yeah, you, I, I would agree that, that the, the Golden Devils are not as accessible, certainly, as the distillery modelings. That's that's no question about that. Although for spirits geeks, you know, there's a lot to be said for the for for that style, so. Those are the things that I've really found moving like big island nuts over has been really interesting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, buy the 2020 Great House before it's gone forever. Keep an eye out for the 2021. It's delish. So creamy. Coconut, pineapple. Oh my God, so much going on. That's terrible. I'm going to drink so much of that stuff. Um... The, this is another special release by Hamden. They're calling this the Younger. It's their L Rock um, uh, level pot distilled, obviously, distilled in 2016. Uh, this is the mid ish uh, ester. Uh, I guess it's kind of like the low, it's like the first of the Continentals. I don't know, is L Rock considered? Uh, the price point of the great houses are about 100, 110. Uh, I don't have any pricing information on the L Rock here. Yeah, that's a new release. Uh, five year old, so you know a little bit longer, younger than the other L Rocks we've seen, which are quite expensive. They just released a, a 10, 11 year old, 180 or 175 dollars. Pretty, pretty, pretty high. That's why I think the great houses give so much. Yeah, the third lowest mark. Thank you, Dallas, killing it. Uh, so yeah, on the lower side, this is a very different character. Has some of that like plasticine, modeling clay. Some fruit behind, I'm not sure if that's left over from the great house though. It's not a big fruity bomb. It's, it's more intricate. There's good spice, clovey, clovey stuff behind that. Some bright orange fruits here now too, maybe like kumquats and loquats. 
or smell the loquat. They're only right for a little while. Low ester for Hamden, but still pretty funky compared to the reals. That's absolutely true, Blue Wire. Yeah, this is way, way funkier than anything distilled, you know, from most modern rum producers. And of course, you know, esters aren't the only flavor element. You know, you're, 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 you're when you're making these rums, you know, you're, we're measuring and talking about esters, you're measuring one of hundreds of compounds that are responsible for the flavor elements. Um, and, you know, the, those are in varying, you know, levels. Of, obviously, you, you just expect higher ester to have higher of these other many flavor compounds as well. Um, but just so much going on in these. Speaking of Hamden, that Probitas blend is an insane value. You, you're right. You guys are doing my job for me. Love Probitas. Crush that stuff. Um, Probitas, I like in a dry daiquiri, although maybe it's a little too intense for that. It goes great in anything. Oh, God, yeah, this is opening up with some air here now. That, that, that modeling clay thing is still there, but it's more subtle. Now we're getting some really, really complex spices. Hmm. Ginger, kefir. This is one for uh, the pad thai. Pair this with pad thai. Mm. Wow, wonderful. Super easy going. Probably should have tasted that before the uh, Great House, which is much more intense and, and rich. And then finally, boom, our wonderful collab with Smuggler's Cove. This is the 14 year old, did I taste this already in here? I don't think so. 14 year old Worthy Park single cask I selected with Martin. Um, it is the high ester, uh, there are two, only two marks that are made, uh, that are distilled at Worthy Park. Well, that I know of, I mean, maybe there's other stuff. Two marks, we usually see the, the Worthy Park extra, and which is quite rare, I've never seen them in the wild and the light. And this is a blend at birth, before before aging, of the two styles um, for what they call Worthy Park Medium. Um, oh, Jesus. And then 14 years in ex-bourbon, um, around the nine, 10 year old mark, they would have consolidated maybe one or two barrels, uh, sorry, two or three barrels into this one barrel. Um, so, which is typical in the region, there's just no way to produce it if you don't do that because by the time it's 14, 15 years old, there's no rum left, which kind of defeats the purpose. So, um, so that's what they do. And then we selected it uh, last year. It was bottled at Cast Strength. It's extremely affordable, even compared to their own distillery bottlings, I, I think for what it is. 54% alcohol, uh, no filtration. You see a lot of like, weird hazies in the bottom, which is a good sign. Um, this one, I love the nose straight off the bat. It's moving more toward that like dark olive and crazy spice, much more oak than either of the other two rums we've had today. You can see the crazy color. Although with a little bit of water, I'm gonna taste it first. Mmm, you do have, oof big smoldering kind of uh, uh, almost tea and dark olive and super savory, um, super, super savory, but one little splash of water and it's just this fruit bomb. Lucas is asking about the price of the Worthy Park and it is not very expensive. I wanna say it's um, 120 bucks for a 14 year old, there you go, money on it. Oh, just opens up just this voluptuous, like ultra ripe fruit, still tons of spice. It would hold up nicely on a nice hand carved Neve luxury ice cube. Uh, DP Donahue, good call. Yeah, this stuff goes forever. It's no slouch. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, Bill's here, hey Bill. Um, oh my God, 
we just we just selected um, a 15 year old continentally aged uh, worthy from Redacted, which is up online. What's a good affordable dark rum that's more brown, sugar, sweet forward with spice as well? You mean less funky? Um, hmm, affordable, dark, less funky, but dry or you should, brown sugar sweetness? I mean, maybe you could try an Eldorado. The new Eldorado 12 um, has less sweetness than the old ones. It's still on the sweet earth side of flavors, not no pot still in that. So that could be a good place to start. It's not that affordable though. Um, uh, could try the Demerara from Hamilton. It's 25 bucks, it's solid. I wouldn't say it's super sweet. Uh, can you pick one from the, for me between 2020 Great House or the WP? Oh, that's a, so, such a tough call. Um, Hot E head, G hot E head. Uh, between the 2020 and the, I, I'd probably have to go with the Worthy Park just because of the intensity and the uniqueness of, of that hot, that high age statement, which is so, so rare in Jamaica. But the Great House is probably more approachable. And um, yeah, Lucas says privateer for something dark. It's pretty, I wouldn't say those are affordable, unfortunately. Um, this is pretty clean. The four square stuff, you know, real McCoy. There's no, we don't, we don't really have access to less expensive four square, aged four square so much. Um, you know, not without, you know, plugging my competitors' exclusives. So, uh, you know, uh, there's a the, there's a real McCoy five year which um, isn't dark, um, but otherwise pretty hard to find that style. I mean, okay, it's delish, fine expensive um nothing wrong with that what are your thoughts on the 26 golden devil forever home whiskey i love it i think it's totally nuts um and and i'm super into it um it's expensive it's it's unique it's it's gorgeous i'm surprised we haven't tasted that here did we not taste it here i feel like i did do i not have notes up i wonder if i don't that would be weird um, so I should have tasting notes up on that. Golden Devil, the new Yarmouth, 26, they're referring to that. Oh my, I haven't got tasting notes up on it. That's upsetting. I'll have to do that. I liked it a lot, but it's wild. It's weird stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it, I'll bring it by next time. Real McCoy 12 is solid. Yeah, super solid. You know, the RL Seal 12 is too. You know, not much more expensive. Um, those are extremely high quality products. You're right, I don't have a, a, a review. I'll, I'll do that immediately. Foursquare Golden Devil that came in a while ago was fantastic. Thank you, Brett Colombo. That is a, the truth. I'm almost certain that sold out, but if not, that would be a great choice. And it's a little more expensive, but those are badass. We're finally getting those, um, those Polish rum bottler stuff. The colors of rum is finally moving. Tiny quantities, but there's a bunch of Foursquare there expensive as well a bunch of there's another you know another cask of uh you know all the big boys um hamden haven't popped mine yet i think you'll dig it i mean it's wild stuff it's pretty rustic mm. but i did dig it i'll open it here next time oh my god that worthy park really opens up with water it's still got this Fusile, dark, almost like licorice. I think that's the flavor. A um, little bit of licorice on the finish, like an Annie's uh, smokiness behind. It's just so wild. Um, so yeah, Worthy Park, hell yeah. Love it. Can't wait for the extra. I can't believe they're bottling an extra for us though. That's their super high ester. That's nuts. It's not gonna be for everybody, but very excited for that. And finally, the final smoky, smoky one of the day. This is, um, yeah, this is the Benriac smoke season. It's flavored with Benton, Benton's ham from Tennessee. No, no, it's not. Oh, that'd be such a good crossover. Come on, Tennessee, Brown Foreman, Jack Daniels, Benton's, Benriac smoke season. There's a, there's a whiskey pair for you. Come on, come on guys. 
Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, um, this is their heavily peated. It's finished, it's, it's mat matured in bourbon and virgin oak. You know me and virgin oak, I'm uh, very skeptical, but uh, it, it, you never see, it. you never know. A while back, you did say you had an older Kleinleash coming up. It's true, we bought a cask of Kleinleash. It's very old and expensive. It was supposed to be 300 plus liters, um, but we ended up getting nine cases out of the barrel. So I won't be pre-selling that. I'm just going to covet it and um, we'll have to do something with it when it gets here, figure out who gets to buy it. I'm not sure how. Um, anyway, that was pretty big, pretty big bummer. We did get a 25 year old Krakenmore that the exact opposite. We were expecting 250 bottles and they told us there's 600. So I think we're gonna end up taking half that cask. Excuse me, half that cask because it's a lot to sell. Sherry, Krakenmore, 25 year. It's pretty, pretty, pretty special stuff. You don't see Krakenmore out there very. Can I buy a bottle of it? Uh, sure. Forever Home Whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll gladly give, sell you a bottle. Okay, Ben React smoke sees now we're on the Peter. Yeah, this is real smoke here. This is, this does have a bit of a smoky ham thing going. I haven't tasted the Ben Nevis 24 year. That's a great question. I'm excited to open a bottle. I was gonna grab one for today, but uh, I didn't get a chance. Yesterday it was crushed, so we did this instead. Yeah, we'll open the Ben Nevis uh, for sure. Um, hopefully next week, I'll, I should have time. Not sure what else will come up. I've got uh, the new Doc Swinson single cask as well. I'm gonna open those. Those are fun, but uh, the Ben Nevis, you know, it's expensive, but I can't imagine it's bad. I mean, those old Ben Nevises are, are really, really special. Um, so voila, smoke season though, very forward. You don't get a lot of that. It's not that I love Pete for sure. It's that Highland sort of smoldering underbrush and honey. Not obstructed at all by the virgin oak, I would say. Mm -mm. Yes, it's easy, it's rich. It's a great entry into Highland Peters. I'd say it's, it's, it's very balanced. Um, for the for the level of peat that's in the in the bottle, um, lots of malt. What's the Doc Swinson single cask? It's uh, single barrels that I selected for the sh for the shop. They're exceptional. Um, you know, again, it's more of this MGP stock, which you know in the five ish five six year range. So no legends uh, in terms of the source, but the quality is exceptional. Um, Fifty bucks or whatever. It's top notch stuff. So with some water, this brings out some more citrus. A little more ocean character, actually. Great sort of old school citrus feeling to it. Now it's kind of starting to feel a little more isla -y. I haven't tried the Stellan Black. I can't even get an idea of like, like what it is. Um, so I, I, I'm waiting to hear back from Barrel to, or Stellum to figure out what that is exactly. Hmm, I can't. It's got a little bit of a salted ham thing in it. I don't think I can smell the Bentons from here, but maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, that's really nice stuff. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, ben Rianx doesn't put a lot of good bad whiskey out these days, anyway. So that's the show, pretty much. You got a little taste of the mezcals, Berta Vasquez, these beautiful labels from Resperal, 30% profit share, planting 25,000 agaves. Gorgeous labels, man, this stuff is killing. If you gotta pick one, it's the Simeon Ramirez. It's ex exquisite and so unique. We tasted the upcoming Hamdens right there. Gorgeous stuff. Um, that's the Great House 2020. One, you gotta buy the 2020 while you can. And their new L Rock, that lower ester mark, low-ish ester mark, and then the Worthy Park. God, this stuff is nuts. Um, and that was spectacular and finished off with a little Ben React smoke season. That's a nice little aperitif. So, uh, uh, sorry, digestive, I don't know what's wrong with me. Have you tasted the McAllen Harmony Collection Rich Cacao? No, I did not get a sample of that. They only 
sold us a, a handful of bottles and it uh, doesn't need much help, so uh, I let that one go. Um, I'm sure it's lovely. A new, a new series of McAllen to collect. I'm sure that will go over well. We're getting to the end of the show here. I hadn't planned any special giveaways um, for today, but I promise next week we'll be back with something extra big. Ultra, super, nutso. Um, and I can't tell, is it better to take one bottle and, and split it or try and get a, a few more so that more people win? I don't know. I wonder, I wonder. One big bottle or mm, several medium-sized bottles. Uh, maybe we'll try that for once so that there are more winners. I like I like having winners. Uh, more. Great. Great suggestion. Okay, more. An entire barrel. That could be fun. If I had any barrels to sell that you guys wanted. Mellow corn giveaway upcoming, folks. I want, yeah, cast strength mellow corn. Uh, will, uh, it has to be one little well or oh, several big bottles. I wish I had several big bottles. More winners, smaller bottles, okay. Our old tub is already basically be given, given away, so it's not gonna happen. Uh, more winners, more winners. No Koi Hill. Is, are you trying to sell booze? ISO Koi Hill at MSRP? What is that? Does that mean you're trying to sell something? I don't do the lingo. Um, I'd love to ban somebody today though. That was fun when I did that last time. Several mediums, several medium bottles. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, ISO Koi Hill at MSRP. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's exciting. Um, I don't have. Oh, just suggesting a giveaway. Yeah, we only don't even get Koi Hill. Thank you for clarifying, uh, M. Levine is a me. Um, great. Okay. Uh, I seek out. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that. That 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 uh, tater lingo. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, trade, trade, trade lingo. It's uh, it's all Greek to me, bro. Um, but he wants it not selling. Thank you for that. Good good news. Uh, we don't, we're not going to get Koi Hill. I mean, if we do, it's going to be tiny. I, I explained this at the beginning, but they're, they're, we're not a huge, um, we're not a huge Jack account. I can't barely sell Jack Daniels, even if I try. Uh, barrel proof. Yeah. When they give it to us, love it. You know, obviously crushed with that. Akeshi Ichiro's. We had a little of the Ichiro's collab, the du duo distilleries on online. Um, the rest, I mean, it was like, three bottles of this or that. So that's all gonna go to the, the raffle or something. Um, it's uh, Kilcarran eight year. What do you think of the Kilcarran eight year Oloroso? The one that came out, I thought it was awesome. Very, very good. Um, a lot of people like the Rechar better. Can I have the 80 year old G&M Glenlivet? Whiskey Badger, you can for $100,000. Uh, I bought a few of those barrel proof JD store picks. You got, yeah, they're really good. You know, they can't go wrong. Super solid stuff. So I wish they'd give us more, but it used to be so available, but everything is, everything's so hard nowadays. Um, so yeah, anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, sorry, I don't have anything fun to give away. Um, but I promise next week we'll do either many medium bottles or one big boy bottle. Um, depending on what we have. What's the winner ban again? Yeah, 30 days. 30 days sounds good. I'll take it. Uh, the website says 110. If you've got $100,000 whiskey badger, I will sell it to you for $100,000. $10,000 discount. Boom. It's yours. Um, that's a deal. Honestly, great investment. Great investment. Great investment. Uh, same day and time next week. Yep, yep, should be there. How's the new whistle pig? Which one are we talking about? I haven't had it. Uh... I don't know about Adelphi. I know they have a new, um, I know they have a new importer. I haven't seen anything from them yet. I'm, you know, we're selling the Arden American stuff. I wasn't offered any Adelphi down here. Was that up north at Kalila? That seems very strange for something for me to miss. Um, 
Uh, Jakarmarth, uh, the, I, I mean, in the morning, typically, it should be here. Ferrand, uh, the Bardstown Ferrand, I, I'm supposed to get 12, 12 uh, bottles tomorrow. Oh, that is, I think that's a customer barrel. I think someone was able to snag a barrel from them. So I don't know if that's going live. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think that's real. Store picks, Russell's. Well, we first, we, we have one on the way. Two are missing. So we're going in April. We've set our date finally. So we're going to make up for that. So yeah, I have one on the way of Russell's store picks. Very excited. No, no ETA. ET on the Longmorn reviews. Andre, I'm so sorry. I'll do it right after this. Um, I assume it's the Hart Brothers. It isn't a dark sherry though. That's not, I know that's what you want. So I'm not doing a good job selling it, but it is very, very delicious. Uh, shows WP in stock. Oh, I don't know. Then I haven't tasted it. I, I have no idea. Art Merkin, we got a little single cask. It was like three, three balls. Yeah, tell Sam that we need more. Tell Sam we need more. If you know, if you got a line on Sam, go for it, whatever. And Adelphi for that matter. Um, I got three balls. I think they're gonna go to the lottery. I mean, that's like, you know, we can't just, we, we gotta do something with those. Um, not that many people really know about that stuff though. It's it kind of sitting on the shelves. I sold every bottle of Torovec I, 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 I could get. And the new release of that is coming soon. But um, Arden Merkin uh, seem to have plenty available and it's delish. So heads up on that. We will be going to Makers next April. Um, Black Art, they're allocating this week or next. So Octomore, Black Art, those should all be coming. Of course, the allocations are silly, stupid. 12 bottles of each, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so that's a frustrating. Um, but yeah, we are picking a new makers soon. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Black art should be soon as well. What else do we have here, guys? Tell Sam we need Arden American cast strength. It says swine merchants. I guess it's going to be good. It, um, you know, I haven't had, we haven't picked a bad whistle pig yet. I don't think, I don't think it's a 17 year though. If it is, then that's news to me. Uh, great to see you whiskey badger. Thanks for coming through. And uh, yeah, I'll be back next week with some fun picks. Uh, we're gonna taste those Doc Swinsons. We're gonna taste the Ben Nevis and anything else crazy that comes in. I won't be cutting my hair. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. There's a new stave type we're gonna play with. Oh, uh, Andre, the Amroot k &L pick is nuts. It's nuts. So is the SoCal Whiskey Club one, by the way, uh, as you, I'm sure, have heard. Real Ratza Fratza, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. What a great name. Uh, and we'll see you soon, guys. Thanks for coming through. It's a, a good to be back. And stay safe out there, all right, guys? Be well. Ciao.